Quick disclaimer, this was recorded before Kenny Galladay signed with the Giants and before Kyle Fuller was released from the Bears and then signed with Denver. So that's definitely going to change some of the picks potentially, but still some quality trades and content in here. And I think overall this mock draft is pretty solid. Um, Thanks for understanding and let's just jump right into it. What's popping, everyone? Welcome to episode 63 of the Flea Flicker NFL show. And this is going to be a great mock draft. And I am once again joined by my great co-host, Amal Ronek. I am Arib Umar. I'm sure you all know me by now. But yeah, what's up, Amal? What's going on? And what are you thinking about these mock drafts recently? Because there's a, there's some interesting picks I've seen. Yeah, man. I mean, it, it's really interesting what's been going on. Uh, lots of There's been a lot of... Uh, a lot of movement, I guess, in some of these picks. A lot of players been trending up, trending down. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about that. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how our next mock draft compares to what we had in the first one. I don't expect Kyle Pitts to fall to twenty-one. I mean, not twenty-one to what? Where was he? Nine, like nineteen, eighteen with the Giants. I, I I don't expect him to fall. Not. I don't expect him to fall that low. Uh, to to like anywhere near that I, i'd expect in this one at least to, to hopefully kyle pitts will be in the top 10 so um we'll see how things fall but uh we're gonna have trades now projected here um as we go on we'll uh put some trades uh that we just think are gonna happen and uh yeah uh we'll see how things go let's get it started yep let's hop into right into it so number one pick jacksonville jaguars obviously uh, Trevor Lawrence is the pick here. Like, not even a question. Um, best quarterback in the draft class, I'm all, and we can move on. Yeah. Number two, though, this is interesting. Zach Wilson to the Jets, potentially. Maybe a Justin Fields, who I think has better intangibles than Zach Wilson. The Jets, though, I think it's almost a foregone conclusion at this point that they're going to move on from Sam Donald. And I don't know if it's necessarily a knock against Sam Donald and more like Adam Sala and – um Adam Sala and Michael Floor want to bring in their guy at quarterback and they want to reset that quarterback clock that's reset that rookie quarterback contract and open up another Super Bowl, Super Bowl window or and I guess contending contention window if you would and I think quarterback is the move here I think Sam Brown's going to get traded and I think I'm all there's a great chance that you could bundle in picks and have Sam Donald get traded to a team like the 49ers or a team like, I don't even know, like maybe Carolina or something like that. But I think with this pick, I think a quarterback is a lock. Yeah, I'm with you here. I, I think uh, I'm going to – I think it's a lock here as well. If they aren't going to pick Sam Darnold, then trading down is probably – if they are going to stick with Sam Darnold, then trading down is an option here. So this is a potential trading down candidate. To, let's say like the Falcons trading up to get a guy like Zach Wilson or Justin Fields or a team like um, the Panthers to trade up to get Zach Wilson or Justin Fields but I think uh, like you're like, I think you hit you're, you're absolutely right here I think uh, I think two will be quarterback here up to you here uh, on who you think the Jets are going to take at two not who I mean it could also be who you want but yeah. <laughs> um I, I think I don't know. I flip flop between Zach Wilson and Justin Fields on the daily at this point. Cause I think Jet Zach Wilson is the better quarterback right now. He's better at doing the off platform stuff. He's better at most of the quarterback stuff, but Justin Fields doesn't have the injury issues played against really high level competition played in the biggest games. He's always had those intangibles. He's a winner. I think he's probably a better leader than Zach Wilson doesn't have the injury history. Honestly, you can go, you can go with either one. Um, I'm going to just leave it up to you, Amal. Uh, they're tied okay. for me, essentially. All right, all right, all right. okay. So then I'll pick Zach Wilson up, too. Um, I, I like Zach Wilson a bit more than uh, Justin Fields. But, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm cool with both of them as well. Uh, three, Miami. So this one, a lot of people were kind of like, in the last mock draft, we took Chase here at three. Uh, so far, the first two picks have been the same as they were before. Three with Miami, I think here barring Pene Sewell any, makes sense to me yeah barring any nonsensical Deshaun Watson not the nonsensical it is sensible sensible uh it can happen but uh it, I mean do, can do you want to project the Deshaun Watson trade here Reeb, or uh 
you you want to save that later down the line. The more the more and more we go, more I think Deshaun Watson is going to get traded to Carolina. So we can that's move on then. Yeah. All right. So then. Uh, <laughs> Just pick Penny Sewell. I think, yeah, I mean, he's the highest ceiling of any offensive tackle in this cl- draft class. You need to protect Tua. Tua did come off a hip surgery last season. I think people are forgetting that, and helping him succeed in that aspect is important. And also, when it comes to weapons-wise, Amal, I think, yeah, Jamar Chase, Devontae Smith, even a Kyle Pitts, they're great players. But I think you can also get great players at pick – I think they have pick 19 as well in this class. So I, I like that. Uh, number four here, and we had Justin Fields going here last draft class, but I think sort of a move that went under the radar on all, Matt Ryan restructured his contract, and I believe it's going to cost $50 million to cut him in 2022. So I don't think the, I don't think the, the Falcons are going quarter, going with a quarterback whatsoever in this, uh, in this year, I think, period. So I think the Justin Fields pick doesn't make any sense anymore. And from – from where I'm looking at the rest of this team, they don't need a wide receiver mode. They don't need another tight end necessarily. Like maybe they can go with a Kyle Pitts and draft a great offensive weapon. Maybe they can go with a corner, but I think this is too high for a corner like a Caleb Farley, Patrick Sertain. I think this might be a great spot for our first trade mall. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sort of throw that to you. What if Atlanta traded down with the Denver Broncos? And the Denver Broncos trade up for Justin Fields. And I know Justin Fields doesn't fit the normal criteria of a John Elway quarterback. Obviously, he wants a tall white quarterback, not a tall black one. But I'm sure he can make an exception here. <laughs> yeah, so I would assume it would be like a, a not – I would assume it would be like a future second. I would assume a ninth. It would definitely be a future first, I think, for sure. Because you're moving up, you're moving up five picks in the top four picks to draft a quarterback. Oh, I think. Yeah. But I think the compensation doesn't matter as much because that stuff sort of works itself out, and that's it won't true. matter for this draft as long as you're trading four or nine. But what do you think about that trade? Do you think it's something that could potentially happen? Because I think I, the more and more it. we go, I'm, I'm I don't think it. Drew Locke is the future for the Broncos. I think John Mullen has realized it, and. Yeah, I mean, there were reports that they dumbed down the offense for Drew Locke, and that's just not a good look for any quarterback. I think it makes sense. And I think Justin Fields getting an explosive weapon for this team. And honestly, I'm all, I don't know if you looked at the Denver Broncos roster recently. The roster is really nice. Like, they have they have a lot of playmakers coming back from injury. Cortland Sutton being the biggest one. Uh, Von Miller coming back on the defensive side, I believe you've got lots of pieces there. And I just wonder if maybe getting the quarterback is the biggest difference in between them being a doo team. I think they went five and 11 last season and actually winning games, maybe making a playoff run this year in 2021. Yeah. I mean, here, I think to first answer your question, I, I, I think this is actually a great trade. The Falcons. Yeah, they could, they could redshirt. Um, I mean, the term would literally be redshirting quarterback and pick quarterback at four. But I think I think Matt Ryan still got got a couple of, kind of a couple of years in him, Reeb. I'm I'm gonna be dead honest. It'll be like a Jordan Love situation where it's gonna be a long wait. And at that point, why would you just pick a quarterback now? I mean, you can you can wait. But the, I think the Falcons' perspective could be maybe that since we're already this high, we plan to never be this high ever again. So since we're already this high, we might as well already draft the quarterback of the future, which is also pretty smart. I'm not gonna blame them if that's their mentality. Uh, but yeah, trading down does make a lot of sense here to me. And uh, a team that's desperate of a quarterback like Denver, uh, moving up from uh, nine to four, uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of that. And uh, with that fourth pick, I, I would expect uh, Justin Fields to be picked here. Um, Trey Lance would be too high to take the risk on. Uh, so uh, in, in the situation of trading up, I, I, I would expect the, this pick to be. And this would be a great pick, and uh, it, it would definitely uh, – the Justin Fields to Jerry Judy and uh, Cortland Sutton connection would be would be something special for sure. I, I, I'm a fan of, uh, of this trade and this pick. Yeah, and he's a, such a mobile quarterback. He controls the run game really well, and you're quite literally adding, uh, adding another aspect to the offense you didn't have before. Number five here with Cincinnati Bengals, they don't have – 
the greatest offensive weapons. I think that's definitely something that's true uh, on all the offensive line and at wide receiver and all. But I do expect them. They lost AJ Green, lost John Ross. I do think they're going to make a deal in free agency, and they haven't made one yet with a Kenny Galladay, Earl Will Fuller, or somebody, Juju, whoever it might be. I just don't believe that Mike Brown is going to be this stupid to not invest in his rookie quarterback. And I think they're going to dra- get a weapon, which for me would probably knock out Jamar Chase and Devontae Smith or even a Jalen Waddle, the wide receivers. And I think you got to protect your quarterback. You had the 30th worst offensive line. Uh, I looked at their depth chart when it came to offensive line. Um, yeah, they have Jonah Williams, who they drafted recently in the first round from Alabama, I think two years ago maybe uh he was injured his rookie year towards acl played some good football later on but billy price pretty solid xavier suofila pretty solid uh, right guard but right tackle for me as a whole and i think you can probably get rashawn slater who's the most solid offensive line prospect in this class i don't know what you you're down with that i guess you are you made the pick i'm I'm very down with that i mean i I was gonna pick him for you i i I, I was was very very down with the rashawn slater pick Makes too much sense here. Uh, for me, Rashawn Slater is a top five player in this draft, uh, and he, he deserves to be a top five pick. Uh, and I think he can play guard as well, Ma. So he gives that added versatility to a poor offensive line. And if someone gets injured, he can fill in if need be. Yeah, I mean, if, if Sewell doesn't, get, doesn't fall to five, I think Slater at five makes a lot of sense. I think they have to go offensive line. And like you said, it's illogical if, if the Bengals don't find a, a, a wide receiver. They can answer the need of wide receiver. And it's not even like they need an like an insanely good wide receiver. Like Jamar Chase and Devontae Smith, they're amazing wide receivers, obviously. But like, let's be real here. They don't like T. Higgins is a, still a, a pretty damn good receiver. Tyler Boyd's a pretty damn good receiver. I don't know if you need that that need of a wide receiver is as high on the priority list as protecting your quarterback per se. And, and they pick early in, in round two. So it exactly. just makes sense. Yeah, exactly. So um, if a, they dream, a deep wide then, receiver class. Uh, yeah. So. It's a deep O-line class too, but I think Rashawn Slater and, and Sewell, in my personal opinion, are on a complete league of their own. So I think uh, I, 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 I'm a fan of, of Rashawn, Rashawn Slater here at five. And then to your India, to your Philadelphia Eagles, I almost said Indianapolis there. Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles here at six. Uh, this is your dream pick here, Arib. Uh, Jamar Chase, we hammer. Him, we didn't have have him in the last mock. We had him at three in the last mock, and now we finally have him to your uh, Philadelphia Eagles. This one, this pick really doesn't have it. Really doesn't need an explanation, but I'll give it to you guys anyway. Uh, Jamar Chase is is the most logical pick. He's by far the best wide receiver in this draft class, and uh, not by far. I take it back. It, it's still. It's. I think it's him and Smith. But I think it's it's firmly Jamar Chase at one. Uh, but Jamar Chase is just a special talent. He's probably the best receiver prospect I have seen since Amari Cooper. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm just really I'm really high on Jamar Chase, and uh, I like what I'm seeing from him at LSU. Considering what we just saw from Justin Jefferson, and he he was better than Justin Jefferson in college. I expect high things from Jamar Chase. So I, I like Jamar Chase here at six. And, uh, yeah, we can move on uh, to the Detroit Lions here at seven. Uh, seven. I, I, would I think wide receiver makes sense, seeing that they're, they're yeah, losing yeah, Kenny yeah. Galladay. And yeah, Devontae so. Smith. And they lost think, Marvin Jones. Yeah, and they lost Marvin. Where did he sign again? I think he signed Jacksonville, if I'm correct. Um, so, yeah, they lost their two top wide receivers. And I don't think Quintez Cephas is the best uh, re- replacement. Devontae Smith, you just picked him. I have no complaints for that. Devontae Smith, my only, my only sort of flaw with him isn't really even a flaw. He's kind of light. He's like 175 pounds, yeah. 180 pounds. But otherwise, I'm all great route runner. He's a good zone beater. He has a jump ball ability. He's not the fastest guy. He's like he and he and Jamar Chase aren't athletic freaks, but I think they have more than enough athleticism to win jump balls, do whatever they want to do. Um, yeah, and I think they both have wide receiver one ceilings. I saw you pressing the trade button for the Carolina Panthers and we can't yep. do player trades on here, but I mean, you, you know what, it's going to be. I think it just makes sense. I'm all Carolina. Yeah. I think they have the most, I, the jets have the most to offer obviously for 
um, Deshaun Watson, but I don't think the the Carolina Panthers are going to be that against going out here and getting their, um, getting their future quarterback in Deshaun Watson. Um, All right. So um, now, like you said, I think Houston does make a lot of sense here. And uh, yeah, I mean, Deshaun Watson, I think, yeah, I said Houston makes a lot of sense here to because I think this is a high pick for Houston. They're still picking in the top 10. They could still get a quarterback here, but they have Tyrod Taylor. So I don't know if they're necessarily optimistic of their future. So they may not draft quarterback in the first round. And they may I think they would, though. But I think they would. Um, let me first get this trade going. But, yeah, I, I, I think they would for sure. But it, it, it's, it, it's definitely interesting and something to look out for. Um, they were supposed to have the third pick in this year's draft. Uh, I, I mean, in, in this type of trade, this it would be three first, but I, I can't go more than that. Uh, the, there's no way that the Texans wouldn't get crazy compensation for this. Um, yeah, the Texans won't give up. Anything, so. Yeah, pretty much. It would just be Deshaun Watson and maybe like a seventh round pick. Um, yeah. Um, and then the eighth pick here. Trey Lance Trey makes Lance. sense. Trey Lance makes sense here. Um, high ceiling, uh, raw prospect, but I think I think Trey Lance here does, is, is the right move here. And then we're at nine. We're back to Atlanta. Atlanta has a very, they, they picked cornerback in the last draft. Um, Reed, they can go multiple different ways here. They can go Michael Parsons here, linebacker at, at nine. They can go uh, cornerback, like I said, Caleb Farley or Patrick Sertain. They can go Kyle Pitts here at nine and just keep on building up that uh, unguardable weapon that Matt Ryan has. So Mm -hmm. they they can go – and I brought that idea up to you at four in the last mock draft. Um, Interesting stuff here. What do you think happens? Um, I think the biggest hole in that team, Amal, was clearly the defensive side of the ball. and. I think the biggest hole secondary, I mean, it makes sense because they've lost corners over the years. Um, they might want to go with, I think Caleb Farley might fit there really well in all honesty. I think he fits there with AJ Terrell, both of them highly athletic corners who can be really high sort of ceiling players. I, I, I like Patrick Sertain a little bit more, but I think Farley might be a better fit. I also think edge here might be interesting. And I think Could Cody Pay. That's my thing. I think Quiddy Pay might be a reach here, and I think I like the idea of a corner more. But Quiddy Pay, he makes sense to me as well because you need to improve that pass rush. That being said, Amal, um, if I'm looking at my edges list currently, I have like five, six, seven, seven guys who I'd be fine with getting in the top like 50 picks or, or even more than that in all honesty. Like you can go probably like 11, 12 guys who are really worth like top 50 picks. And if you really want to improve your edge and go with one of these round two players, like maybe a Joe Tryon, or I don't think Ronnie Perkins from Oklahoma would fall there, but if you want to go that way, you can, and then just go with the higher ceiling player in the first round in a corner with maybe a Farley or a certain, I don't know, whichever one you prefer. Yeah. I I mean, like, I think like you said before though, I think, I think getting an edge like, like, uh, a uh, Quiddy Pay or Gregory Rousseau is, is just too high. Um, Caleb Farley and Sertain are both in range. I think Caleb Farley is a better fit. So I'm going to roll with Caleb Farley here at nine. And then Dallas at 10. I totally expect them to pick cornerback here. I think that's the obvious pick. Mm-hmm. That's the obvious need. And uh, what better than Patrick Sertain? Uh, many people have him as the cornerback one. So uh, this would be a great pick for Dallas. Makes a lot of sense here. Giants at 11. I think Kyle Pitts fits this, here more. This is where Kyle Pitts fits. I mean, this was probably a mistake that we had in our first month. Uh, I think Kyle Pitts, this would probably be the lowest Kyle Pitts goes, I'll be honest. I, I and I think so. the difference here is I think they need offensive weapons. And Kyle Pitts, yeah, he's a tight end. You have Evan Ingram. 
But this guy lines up outside all the time for Florida. He did crazy things. He's just an oversized wide receiver who's going to prey on mismatches. And Jalen Waddle also makes sense here. And I'm sure Kyle Shanahan is thinking very deeply about drafting Jalen Waddle if he slips all the way to 12. But I think Kyle Pitts makes sense from the offensive weapons standpoint. The Niners, I think corner still is probably their biggest need because I don't believe they've re-signed Jason Verrett yet. Richard, um, still Richard Sherman is gone. J.C. Horn makes sense. Asante Samuel, I'm higher on than you are. Uh, I think J.C. Horn, I think we, we had him last draft as well. He's a lot longer, rangier, almost like a Richard Sherman prototype clone, if you would. I, I like the idea of getting someone in that sort of – like he has the same body of a, of a Richard Michael Sherman. Parsons, Michael Parsons is too high for you. Jalen Waddle. I just don't think they need another wide receiver. <laughs> I think they have – Good enough they wide receivers. They, they don't. That's true. Michael Parsons? I, I don't know. I don't think linebacker is that big of a hole for them. That being said, Amal, it, I think – I don't it, know. It, it, it's, it's definitely uh, – I think it's close between Parsons for me. It, I think it's close between Parsons and Horn. Uh, I'll, I'll probably take Horn because I, I agree with you. I think cornerback is a need. And Jason Verrett and, uh, and Richard Sherman, like I said before, are not uh, resigned at the moment. And I don't expect them to even return, I'll be honest. And uh, Yeah, I don't believe they will yeah, either. So I, I think you have to anticipate that. And uh, J.C. Horn makes a lot of sense. And it's a good fit, honestly, too. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of that pick. Uh, next, we have the L.A. Chargers. Um, they're, they've been moving in the right direction and uh, picking and uh, getting offensive linemen to help Justin Herbert. I think they're going to continue that streak. Correct, Garib? Yeah, I think they brought in Corey Lindsley in free agency. Right now, Brian Balaga is their starting right tackle. At left tackle, though, I just looked up their depth chart. I have no idea who Trey Pipkins is, and oh, I don't yeah, think, yeah. Yeah. I don't think you've got to go tackle here. I know you're higher. You're high on Christian Dorsa. I am as well. I have Christian Dorsa as my fourth ranked tackle, a tackle including Elijah Vera Tucker. But I think Christian Dorsa makes a lot of sense here. You can go Elijah Vera Tucker, but I think Dorsa is more of a, an offensive tackle. And it just makes sense from that point of view. Um, the Vikings, I, I don't know. Biggest NFL needs for the Vikings. Hmm. They, they, they need it. Daniel I mean, Hunter they... has shown some sort of, um, I guess, anger almost. I think he might want to get traded or whatever yep, it might yeah. be. So yeah. maybe you want to go edge there. I believe the Vikings did bring in – they brought in another defensive lineman in free agency. I'm forgetting his name, but they did bring in an interior defensive lineman. Interior offensive line makes sense here as well. If you want to go edge, I think edge with Quiddy Pay, especially with, if Daniel Hunter does somehow get traded, I think that makes sense. Quiddy Pay, to me, makes a lot of sense. I don't know if you're – I guess you're going yeah. with that pick as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think edge is a need. I think Daniel Hunter is probably going to be moved by the, by the time that the season starts next year. Uh, I, I think Edge is definitely a need for them. Uh, line, linebacker is also not a bad pick here. Uh, Michael Parsons. Michael Parsons is, is, is falling. Him off. It, it's kind of surprising yeah. in all honesty. Um, uh, do you, do you, I, and I don't think New England's going to pick him either. I think New England's going to go with Mac yeah, Jones. I think, I think yeah, well, this is, this is a great, we're, this is back to back drafts where we have Mac Jones at 15. Uh, I don't think he's going to fall to 15. I'll be honest. I think someone's going to trade up for him. I can even see Sam Fran taking Mac Jones at 12. Uh, it, it, lots of crazy stuff could happen here. Um, I think they, I could see San Francisco trading up for Trey Lance, in all honesty, on trade, draft day. Like, I can also even see New England giving their first for Jimmy G. I can see so many situations happening. Uh, a lot, Yeah, I can see a bunch of crap happening. Uh, Arizona Jalen here. Waddle here. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, this pick makes too much sense. They just signed today, AJ Green, and uh, Christian Kirk's there. Christian Kirk's probably going to be moved in the next year or two. Jalen Waddle's Tyree Kill 2.0, from what I've seen at, on film, and uh, I'm, I'm a fan of Jalen Waddle here at 16. This is also falling for Jalen Waddle. I don't. It, it, it would be crazy if he fell past 14. Past 13, I, I don't know if uh, Waddle can really fall that 
recorded. And I do happened. believe one of these top three wide receivers will fall them all. I just don't know which, which one. one it'll necessarily I, I, well, I, be. Uh, I, don't, I don't think Chase is going to fall. I think it, it, it will either be Smith or Waddle. I think Chase is now, I think, starting to become the consensus wide receiver number one. But we'll see. Raiders here, I mean, I, I think it's got to be Michael Parsons here. So. I agree. We had Gregory Rousseau last time. They do, they still do have edge like issues, if you will. But Micah Parsons, I think, is best player available. We know Mike Mayock likes to go with best player available, even if it's not necessarily the biggest need. But I do think linebacker is a pretty big need for the San Francisco, not the, 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 the Las Vegas Raiders, rather. And also, their defense also sucked them all last year. So might as well get in an athletic specimen with high upside who doesn't necessarily know how to play the linebacker position yet. But if he does, you're getting someone who, who is the next Bobby Wagner or, you know, the next generational linebacker. Um, 18 here. We had them going Panay the Miami Dolphins first. I think Rashad Bateman just makes a ton of sense here. Uh, if you need to get in more offensive weapons. Rashad Bateman makes sense. I could also see edge here. At least. Ooh, edge. It is a deep wide receiver class. If you want to go that way, wide receiver edge. Uh, they already they already filled their offensive tackle need. Yeah, I, for me, it's probably wide receiver and edge is the biggest need. So if you want to go with a Gregory Rousseau, who is a high upside guy, Absolutely. but also at the same time, on wall, you want to help your young quarterback in two of the most. So I can I, see them going either way. Yeah, considering they passed up on Chase at three. Exactly. That's my mentality. And I think Rashad Bateman, he's right up there as a top four but, wide receiver in this but class. We, we also said that the, I mean, the, I think I expect the Dolphins to probably go heavy on the remaining receivers that are left on the market. They have Devontae Parker, they have Preston Williams. I expect them to, if they don't go after someone, they'll probably, they can probably get someone in the second round too if they, if they really wanted to. Um, I, yeah, for me, I'm going to, I'm going to probably lean towards Gregory Rousseau. Yeah. And one quick thing, Miami does have the, the fourth pick in the set in the, th- the second round as well. So there's going to be wide receivers who fall. So if you want to go Gregory Rousseau, I'd personally go with a Rashad Bateman, but I think you, you again, it's a very deep wide receiver here, class. The here, wide receiver think, class is deeper than edge. Yeah. So here they just fill their wide receiver need the, the, the Washington football team. They, it never hurts to pick another one, but I, I think now since they just signed one, I don't know if that's necessarily the biggest need right now for them. Um, here, there's not. I'll be honest with you. I've never, I, I've never thought I'd say this, but I think outside of quarterback, Washington Football Team might have the best team on paper. The best team in the NFC East. I still think they need help at offensive linemen, though, Amal. I don't think they yeah, ever filled team, the yeah, hole. That's what, I'm that's what I'm saying. NFC East, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think they ever filled the hole that was left behind from Trent Williams. And I think if you want to go with uh, an offensive tackle here, um, Vera, Tucker. Vera Tucker makes sense. I, again, I, I, some people say he's not an offensive tackle. He played I, damn I, I, good I, I, at I offensive think he, tackle. I think he's offensive guard, honestly, from my team film. But I think I think he's interchangeable, kind of like uh, – like, uh, what's his face? Um like uh, Dar- was it was a Darisaw or Slater that was interchangeable. Darisaw, I think, Darisaw, is what Darisaw, we said. Dar- yeah, that, that's what we said in the last mock. So yeah, I think I think I'm I'm a fan with the Elijah Vera Tucker here. I, you know. and yeah, then, and then Tevin Jenkins here is the smash pick for me. I think yeah, they need call- an offensive lineman. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. I think and Tevin uh, Jenkins is just a mauler. Mall. This guy's a big physical guy. He looks kind of weird because he wears glasses. So. He looks kind of like a nerd, but uh, he he does not play like a nerd on the football field. He's a great run blocker, very physical, moves pretty well, decent enough. He's probably he's definitely like a lock for a first round offensive lineman for me. And now your team, go for so it. Now, so I think the Colts are going to trade back. Honestly, I I I think we need to regain we need to gain back that third round pick we lost to get Carson Wentz. Um, and I think we're going to be trading down to a team like uh, like Seattle or a team like Green Bay. Um, Green Bay is currently sitting at 29. And, uh, yeah, I can definitely see something like that happening. I have, I have a thing for you, Amal, a quick one. Go what I, ha- I think my trade right here would be Indianapolis trading with Cleveland and Cleveland drafting Jeremiah Osukermoa. 
So you're saying they they give up? Okay, I, so I, I, yeah, it'll be tw- it'll probably be twenty six, and probably yeah. like a third, right? I think that would yeah. make sense. Yeah, and then Colts would probably give up a fifth. I would assume. I think that trade makes sense though. Amal. I don't know if it makes no, sense I, for you, I, but I, I, Cleveland. I think- they do need a linebacker. I was thinking Green Bay because Green Bay is also in need of uh, a wide they receiver. Also, they could also go Bateman here because I think the Colts are in threat to get Bateman at 21. And if not the Colts, the Titans are 100% in threat to get Bateman at 22. So that's what I'm saying. They could go wide. They could be a trade up, trade up option at there. And I also mentioned Seattle, but Seattle is nowhere near in the first round. So. Um, See, the reason I like this one, Amal, is because Cleveland had a terrible passing defense. And Awosa Kuramoa is honestly like Isaiah Simmons from last year, except a little bit smaller and probably a harder hitter and faster. He fills the void where he can play corner, he can play safety, he can play linebacker. And that's just how you can you know, bring your passing defense to the next level, which is what you needed in Cleveland last season. So I, I think yeah, it makes sense for it. me. I back yeah, it. Let's go oh, for no, it. I'm, no, I back it. Let's go for that. Uh, 21 here. Uh, JOK. Yeah, JOK. I'm high on JOK, by the way. I, I, I think him and Michael Parsons for me are interchangeable. Uh, JOK is a beast on the field. Um, yeah, I've next- switched between him and Zayvon Collins from Tulsa, but they're both really high for me as well. 22. Titan, we just mentioned that they have a wide receiver need here. Um, could they trade? No, they won't trade down. To I think their biggest need still is edge, though. They, they do have an edge. Nate Clowney was not the answer. Um, where, where do they pick in the second round? I, I do need to know that. Um, they they pick, pick 53. 53 is middle, middle of the pack. Uh, see, will Edge be there? Edge could be there at 53. Could they? Uh, yeah, if we're going best player available... There. I think you got to go with Rashad Bateman. But if you don't, I think Jalen Phillips or Aziz Ojolari fit really well for think, the Titans. I, I like this. I like the Jalen Phillips pick. I'll be honest. I, I, I think the scheme might work for them too. I think uh, he's my third edge in this draft class, Jalen yeah, Phillips. I, I, like, I, I like, like him. I like that pick. I, I'll take the, the Jalen Phillips pick here at 22. And then Rashad now, Bateman gets picked. Yeah. Here, now, the Jets, now the Jets. Assuming, I think they're pretty much done. They just got Corey Davis, but they need to keep on adding wide receivers, man. Um, they're gonna. We have them picking Zach Wilson at two. So, um, yeah, here Rashad Bateman makes a lot of sense. But that's a, that's a great receiving quarter read from what the Jets used mm-hmm. to have to now having Bateman, uh, Bateman Mims, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could honestly play Bateman in the slot as an oversized slot. Where, and, and I'm this sure Corey Davis Jameson plays the slot well, too. Jamison Crowder's still on the team. Like, you, you're you you're building a strong offense because you failed. You don't have Adam Gase anymore. You, you prioritized offensive line in, the, uh, uh, in this draft class or the previous one. And again, this is a deep tackle class. They're picking at uh, the 34, so second pick in the second round. If they want to go with a tackle, then – Go all in. You can get a guy like a Liam Eichenberg, or maybe if Samuel Cosme falls, you can go that way. But I, um, I just think Rashad Bateman fits for the uh, the Jets rather, and the Steelers. Um, Kellen Mond. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here, um, you could go multiple ways. I think running back is probably not an option. Um. Offensive tackles, since they, they're probably going to lose Villanueva. Uh, that makes a lot of sense for me here. Uh, and also, they were pathetic on the offensive line side in the second half of the season. Couldn't uh, open up any running holes. Yeah, so um, I'm a fan of, yeah, Eichenberg's good here for me. Cosme's okay. Yeah, I think Cosme's higher ceiling. So I, yeah. Even though I like Eichenberg more, but – Whatever you like them all, go for it. Samuel Cosme, I think, is more athletic. Up to you. They're both good picks for me, honestly. And even Jalen Mayfield, if you want to really go for the running game, which is their biggest hole, Jalen Mayfield is a mauler in the running game. But he also has some question uh, question marks. Didn't really play an entire season. Injury. I think he has injury history as well. I'd probably go with Samuel Cosme. I think it just fits. Seeing as they, I mean, they just lost multiple offensive linemen. Back it. Let's go. 
Uh, 25, the Jacksonville Jaguars here. They just drafted Trevor Lawrence with the first pick. Uh, they definitely don't need running back. Um, th- Pat Fryer moves probably a reach here at 25, so I don't know. Tight end, I don't see that as an option. Uh, offensive tackle, never hurts to go O-line. Um, defensive line, yeah, I mean, this, this is... This I is just think, do. I think they're going to build around Trevor Lawrence. Exactly. I think. so. I, offensive I, line makes a lot of sense because yeah, l- so. l- like looking at their starting offensive line of all cam robinson decent Jawan taylor at the tackle spots decent but i think with liam eichenberg or jalen mayfield even dylan or uh, out of ndsu like those guys give you higher upside and more stability at the tackle position yeah or jalen I'll mayfield probably, as well I'll, I'll, I'll probably lean jalen mayfield here with go for it bro pick. and then 26 indy uh I could see. I, I think. I think Ed's or offensive tackle is probably their biggest need. They just lost uh, Anthony Costanza. What about wide receiver? Because I'm not a Colts expert. I don't know if like if wide receiver is still a need is, for them. Is it, 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 it is a need, but I think we could we could address that with this free agency if we really wanted to. Um, and we also do have Michael Pittman and uh, I, I, and we do have Paris Campbell. Wide receiver is definitely a need here. I don't know if we pick up first round. I think we normally will probably pick that in the second round. So I'm leaning towards edge or offensive line here. Uh, I like the Liam Eichenberg pick here at 26. Um, I think I think that, that makes sense. Yeah, I like it. I mean, you can keep um, – You can great keep – Great left tackle too. Yeah, great. he's very sound, very technically sound, great, good base, good hand usage. Not the most athletically gifted guy, but he's my number five tackle in this year's draft also, class. I could also see a possibility where if the Niners are willing, the Colts trade, it could be a first. I don't know what he's worth. It could be worth a first or a second. They trade for Matt McGlinchey out of uh, San Fran. I could definitely see that being a possibility. Matt McGlinchey and Quentin Nelson were teammates in college. And Notre they Dame, both, yep. They both were monsters in college, by the way. Matt McGlinchey was a tank. Uh, probably one of the best offensive t- tackles in college for a long time. And he was the second pick in the draft. So, I mean, yeah, obviously he has to have been pretty good. Uh, I, 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 I think uh, I like um, – I like Liam Eikenberg here, though. Um, yeah, and you get to keep Quentin Nelson at his native position. And also, you know, Notre Dame guys, I'm sure they can bond on that left side of that offensive line. Definitely. Next, Baltimore. Have, uh, Baltimore. Baltimore is an interesting team here. Uh, you could go multiple ways. They don't need that. Wide receiver is a need. I could see a Kadarius Tony here. Um, I could... I don't think offensive line is necessarily a need. Uh, yeah, I, I like wide receiver here, Reeb. I don't know about you. I do like wide receiver here. I think you've got to improve that passing game. If I'm looking at wide receivers, they already have a speedster uh, out there with um, Hollywood Brown. Yeah. I really like Terrence Marshall here. I think – He's a big guy who can be a prototypical wide receiver one who can you can help develop with a Lamar Jackson because Lamar Jackson hasn't had that big body threat on the outside versus like I really like Kadarius Tony. He's smaller to me. He's more of like a low end wide receiver one, high end wide receiver two type guy. I think Terrence Marshall risky pick, but for me he's definitely someone who has true wide receiver one upside. Or you can go uh, to Mori on Terry out of these. Shut up. Uh, out of these three, um, I, I like uh, I like Terrace Marshall. So I, this I, guy's crazy fast to him all. He's a deep threat. He's six foot four, great jump ball wide receiver. He does a lot of good things uh, on film, and he has a high ceiling f- for me. Yeah, my my next pick here, uh, a linebacker. I, I I think Zayvon Collins makes a lot of sense here. In the line, to be honest. Go for it, bro. The linebacker is the need for them. Zayvon Collins is a great pass covering linebacker. And this guy's six foot five, like 260. He moves like I don't know if he's gonna run in the 40 or what his GPS times are, but I'm all but this guy runs like a freak of nature. Like the yeah, top zero point zero zero one percent of athletes. Yes. Oh, he used to be quick as hell. Um, next uh 29 Packers. If they the 
knowing the Packers, they won't take the obvious pick here. Um, but I think here, Rondell Moore or Kadarius Tony, you can't go wrong with either or. I honestly, I think I'd go with Rondell Moore, even though he has the injury issues. I, I think I'd probably pick him. I think he just I makes sense. Uh, I know you made the pick, but also one thing that, that's worth noting, Rick Wagner is still not re-signed with the Packers. So if they wanted to go with an offensive tackle, I mean, they, they have could. a plethora of options. That, that being said, they could also – offensive tackle does make a lot of sense too. They have, they, they have an interior offensive line pop. Yeah, because they also just lost uh... – they also just lost – I'm blanking out on his name. The interior offensive lineman for the Packers. Corey Lindsley, yep. Yeah, they just lost Corey Lindsley to the Chargers, I believe. So, um, oh, shoot. Yeah, the best pick here would have been Creed Humphrey for sure. <laughs> if you want, yeah. you can just write in Creed Humphrey, and it's the end no, of the draft I, anyway. I, I, but... I, I, no, I think I – think, no, I still think Toronto more – they need weapons, bro. They still need weapons for Aaron Rodgers. I, I still back this. I still back this. I think I think if the Packers really wanted uh wanted to pick uh they yeah they can take it second round there's still enough like I think Creed Humphrey they could trade up in the second round if they really wanted Creed Humphrey or Landon Dickerson I think all three of these guys are going to be there day two so I, I don't expect all three to be going in the second round so you can't you can definitely I can definitely see uh I'm picking interior offensive linemen and addressing their offensive line problems in the second round um next. They also may not take Rondell Moore if they get if they get a guy like Will Fuller in the in the free agency market, obviously. And I know Will Fuller is really hoping about that, but we'll see where that goes. Um, thirty, the bill. I think this makes enough, this makes too much sense. Najee Harris at thirty to me. Go for it, bro. I mean, I think they might also need cornerback help. Running back makes sense for them. Read anywhere uh, for for. The corner though i feel like i think running back makes sense i'd personally i think i'd still go with Najee harris but the, I, I hit on that before i'm on in our previous podcast the closer and closer we get to august 29th the more the more and more i have javante williams moving up my board <laughs> like yeah, I, mean, if you wanna, I, I don't expect him to be day one though i think that's on that point. i think i i, yeah, I think Najee harris going day one is a surprise in itself as a, like a running back exactly. going this yeah. high yeah i think I think if a running back does go in the first round, it would be like last year with Ceh, thirty second pick, thirty to thirty to thirty two. I, I can't see any picks before, uh, before that. Um, next, uh, Kansas City uh, offensive tackle, bro. Offensive you tackle have to. here. Um, Dylan Radones makes a lot of sense here for me. Yeah, another very technical guy out of NDSU. Um, my only flaws with him, if I remember correctly, were. I mean, he did face inferior competition, but in the senior bowl, he started off really slow and all, but from what I saw, he picked it up big time. He played interior as well. I just think Verdun's is, I don't even know why Alex Leatherwood is still ranked that high on lots of people's like draft boards or whatever. Dylan Verdun's is a better player. Yeah. And then last uh, reigning Super Bowl champs. And that is uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Do they have any needs at all? Like, I think they could just not draft anyone and still win the Super Bowl this year. Quarterback's a need, I believe. Uh, <laughs> Kellen Mond makes a lot of sense here. Now, I guess um, I think we had Christian Barmore last time. I'm higher on Levi and Wizaruski and Wizarike, whatever the hell his name is. I'm higher on Davion Nixon. <laughs> Go for it, bro. I think all three of those guys are super close on my board to yeah, the point where. If, if they lose in Dominic and Sue, if they lose in Dominic and Sue, yeah. I think if they lose in Dominic and Sue, Davion Nixon makes a lot of sense. Um, because he, he's he's bigger than Levi and Wuzariske. Uh, and I think he's more a bit more consistent than Christian Barmore. But yeah, that makes sense for me in this draft, a, a mock draft. Honestly, I think this is way better than our last mock draft of all. And we should continue and go into the second round. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I mean, if we continue to the second round, we'd be here for another hour, man. Because the second round picks are way harder to make than this first round, these first, these first round draft picks. Because it gets way more decisive on team needs. But uh, yeah, I mean, maybe in the future, future drafts, maybe uh, we'll see. What are name some of the players who are left on the board who you're surprised didn't go round one? I think I asked you this last time, but yeah, um, I, I think here Kadarius Tony going not going round one is quite surprising. 
Mm-hmm. For me, it's Aziz Ojolari for sure. He's also Aziz Ojolari. They're both kind of surprising. That we had Kadarius Tony, uh, I believe, at uh, 19. No, we had him at 20 with the. Uh, no, we had him at 19 with the the Washington Football Team in the last mock draft. So I thought that was pretty surprising. Aziz Ojolari is also quite surprising. That being said, if um if the Colts didn't, I think Aziz Ojolari with the Colts also makes a lot of sense. If uh, if uh, they don't want to address the off the tackle issue immediately, but yeah, um, those are probably the two names. I agree. The K- Kadarius Tony, Zizo Jalar, Christian Barmore is also a name that that's definitely up there. Trevon Morig, I think Trevon Morig. The thing is with him, I think safety safeties aren't necessarily a very major need. Yeah, the Washington. market is overcrowded with them, and exactly. it's basic economics. There isn't yeah. enough demand, like and there's too much Trevon supply. Morig. He, he, he's a top prospect for me, but I think as a player, I guess, sure, he's undervalued. 29, I think, is, is, is kind of low. But I think the first round, it's, it's going to be hard to see any. What do you think about Elijah Moore, Amal? Because I really like both I the like, Moore players. Like both, they're, they're both close for me, man. Both the Moore players, I think, are very close. This dude's a speedster, too, Elijah Moore. He might actually be the fastest receiver in this draft. He's, he's damn quick. Um, yeah, and he runs good routes as well. I think you can speed. put him. I mean, if I don't know, like Kansas City might need him, or like I think Elijah Moore would be overkill there if they lose a Sammy Watkins. Even like I don't even know. I oh, mean, there's a lot of different options. There are lots of fits for these guys. Um, who else? Edge, uh, Asante Samuel for me at corner. I have him as a first rounder. I think he could go to green bay potentially you can go to even uh he can play outside with tredavious white on the opposite side it down there in buffalo or up there in buffalo rather that makes sense to me yeah, yeah i think I, I think that's it for me though any uh, any other shocking jason, players jason oa definitely i think oa i think he, he's definitely i don't see the hype on him bro i, I just I, I get he runs fast but i know I, I know you're joking but i literally i've scouted I could, see him though going, I could see him going to, to a team like uh, Kansas City, though. I could definitely see. Like, I've scouted uh, 11 edges of all, and he's number 11, and I haven't scouted uh, Ronnie Perkins yet out of Oklahoma, and he's probably going to be like a top five edge for me. So uh, Jason Noah for me, I think lots of fans might think that's terrible that he fell out of the first round. I think he's extremely overrated in my opinion. We'll see how that holds up. I mean, uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, we got a good mock out there, Reeb, and uh, definitely looking forward to see. Um, I'll probably be doing one more, Reeb, uh, leading up to the draft. Today's date's March 17th. So I would assume we'll probably do one the week before the draft, probably. It's probably going to be the last one, I would assume, that we're going to do. And uh, that one will probably be more definitive of our picks because I think by then leaks will be out on like who we are targets. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, free agency free, would be mostly free agency. Over. Well, yeah, it would be most all the teams would have adjusted moves by then. So yeah, yeah, that's all I got to say, man. Yeah, good mock draft. Uh, I like a lot of our picks here. They make sense, scheme fit, and also I just I've got to say I'm 80 players into this draft class. I'm all, and every single player I keep watching is just like this guy look can be really good. Like Dwayne Eskridge out of Western Michigan is a guy I recently watched. Love him. He's a guy I think going round two. I don't know. This draft class, I'm just excited for this draft class, I think is my final point. And there's lots of good players here that can make huge impacts in the NFL. If they go to the right coaches and the right teams. But yeah, that is it for me. Thanks for listening to episode 63 of the NFL, Flea Flicker NFL show. Thank you. Peace out and bye.